In this next factoring lesson, we're going to look at two specific special cases that have special names. The first should be familiar to you, and that is the perfect square trinomial, which is formed when you take a binomial a plus b or a minus b, and you actually multiply it out using FOIL. Remember, it's not a squared plus b squared. That is not the way you multiply. Um, it's a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, or a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. And these two things here are the perfect square trinomials. And the reason why they're called perfect square trinomials, one, is because they're trinomials and have three terms, right? And they are formed by squares. And that's the square. So it's a plus b squared. That's where the square comes from. And you can also think of it geometrically that you have a plus b there as that dimension and a plus b is that dimension. So it's a square that's a plus b by a plus b, right? That's where the perfect square trinomial name comes from. And so when I ask you to factor these, you look for the patterns of a perfect square trinomial, meaning perfect square and perfect square on either end, and then twice the square root of those perfect squares multiply together in the middle and you test it out. So you look for candidate perfect square trinomials and then you see if it pans out to actually be a perfect square trinomial. If so, the factoring is super easy. If not, then you have to find another way to factor it if it is at all factorable. So if I have x squared minus 12x plus 36, my instinct tells me that this might be a perfect square trinomial because I see this. This is a square, and that's a square. And so that's the clue that you might have a perfect square trinomial. And if this is indeed a perfect square trinomial, if it is, then it's going to factor with an x there and a 6 there because of the pattern. See, a squared, b squared becomes an a and a b. And then this sign is minus, so this would be minus, and that would be squared. Now. I am not saying that this is necessarily true, so now I have to test if this is true or false, right, if it actually works. And the way to check if it works, and you have to check if it works, all right, you just can't assume it's a perfect square trinomial, you must verify with this middle term, that's how you verify, because it's supposed to be 2ab. And so if I take 2, and this is supposed to be a, and that's supposed to be b, so x and then times the negative 6, I better get a negative 12x, and I do. So because this is equal to that, therefore I know this is true, and so my factored answer is that, which of course you can check on a calculator. You can check this by typing that in as y1, and that is y2, make sure your tables are identical, but honestly, I can multiply 2 times that and that faster than I can enter these two equations into the calculator. So it's actually easier to check these by hand, but you always have to verify that it is indeed a perfect square trinomial. Don't assume it is. Case in point, this next example. So if I have 100x squared plus 10x plus 1, this is a square and that is a square. So my candidate factored form is going to be 10x plus 1, but I have to check if it's true or false by doing thinking of that as a and thinking of that as b, and I need to check 2ab. So 2 times 10x times 1 is 20x, and oh no, 20x was not what I was given. So that means this is false, and this is not a perfect square trinomial. And as a matter of fact, I can't factor this at all. This is going to end up being prime over integers. But you always have to check that middle term, because I can totally mess with you and give you something that starts with the square and ends with the square, but that middle term won't work. So be careful. Now, of course, I can be even trickier by disguising my perfect square trinomials using a GCF. So you'll see 5x squared plus 20x plus 20, 
And one of the things that you always need to do before you start factoring is to look for a GCF of these terms because first off it makes if there is one it can make all these numbers smaller and much easier to deal with and so I see that these are all divisible by 5 so my GCF is going to be 5 so I can go ahead and factor out the 5 and get x squared plus 4x plus 4 and then if I want to, and, and then I need to go further, so what I'm going to do is ignore that 5 for now, and then I'm going to look at that and see, well, that's a square, and that's a square. So it looks like x squared plus 4x plus 4 might be x plus 2 quantity squared, but I have to check it by saying 2 times x times 2, and that gives me 4x, which is what I needed over there, so yay. So I know that this is x squared plus 4x plus 4 is actually x plus 2 quantity squared, but I mustn't forget the 5, because remember, this is not division. Factoring is just rewriting, so if I just said that, there's no way that this thing is equivalent to 5x squared plus 20x plus 20, but if I put the 5 out front, which I'm supposed to do, then this is the factored form. And of course, you should double check, type this in the calculator or multiply it out and see if you get the original. Now, before we move on to the final special case, let's do a little check to see if you get the perfect square trinomial. So I've given you two quadratic trinomials, and I want you to determine one if they are indeed perfect square trinomials. And if they are perfect square trinomials, then make sure you factor it. If it's not a perfect square trinomial, just say not a perfect square trinomial. Now on to the final of the special cases. This is my favorite special case because I can make my favorite type of Algebra 1 factoring problem out of it. And these are difference of squares, and you have encountered the difference of squares. They are formed from taking a binomial and multiplying it by a similar binomial with one sign change. So what's going to happen when you multiply this out, of course, is that the middle term in the trinomial cancel out because you get a positive AB and a minus AB. So what you get left with is a difference of squares. Like quite literally, here are two squares, a squared and b squared, and I am finding the difference of them. That is why it's called the difference of squares. This is one of the names in, in mathematics that's, that's actually kind of obvious and straightforward. Difference squares. Now I can also write it like this, negative a squared plus b, because remember you can just commute this, so it's b squared minus a squared, and that's a square and a square and a difference. And please note this. Okay, this is how I'm going to get you when I come up with my favorite factoring problem in class. It is never, ever, ever a sum of squares. So it's not a squared plus b squared. There's no difference there, kids. And um, it's not this one either, because this one is really negative a squared plus b squared, and that's not a difference of squares either. So these two examples are not factorable under the real numbers at all. These are actually only factorable over imaginary numbers, which you'll learn in Algebra 2. Now the basic difference of square example is pretty straightforward. You just have to be able to recognize some squares. Um, that's the key here is just visually seeing a number and knowing it's a perfect square. So, for example, x squared minus 144. x squared is obviously a square. And you should recognize 144 because that's 12 squared, and it's a difference of two terms. So quite simply, it's x plus 12 and x minus 12. These are pretty straightforward and when, when they're direct like this. But the key is, of course, recognizing perfect squares. So 225x squared minus 81, you have to recognize that 225 is the square of 15, and that 81 is the square of 9, and that's a difference, so it's 15x minus 9, and then 15x plus 9. And 
Then, of course, you must also remember that it's a difference of squares. If you see this, there's no difference here at all. It's a sum of squares, and you're going to call this prime over the real numbers. Or you can say integers, either one in this case. Now, with all things, of course, I can make this a little bit trickier. I'm actually going to have to because difference of squares are super straightforward. Um, I just have to recognize them, right? And so, in this case, I can disguise it with the greatest common factor, like I could just dis disguise a perfect square trinomial. I have two terms, and whenever you see two terms and you see a difference, then that's a big clue that it's going to be a difference of squares. And it just might be disguised like in this case, because 3 is not a square, 75 is not a square. But oh hey, if I recognize 3 as a greatest common factor, I get x squared and minus 25. And oh hey, check it out. x squared minus 25 is a difference of squares. So it's x minus 5 and then x plus 5. And of course, you should check this out, verify it. You can go table, table, make sure they're identical, right? And um, I said earlier, you might have heard me mention that difference of squares uh, generates my favorite type of factoring problem, and I call it the Goldilocks problem. And I'm not going to give you an example in the video. I'm actually going to have you try some Goldilocks problems in class. I'm going to kind of sneak it in there. But be on the lookout for a very special difference of squares factoring problem next class period. Finally, on to the last check, and this time we're going to focus on the difference of squares. So I've given you two binomials, and I want you first to determine if it is a difference of squares, and if it is a difference of squares, then factor it. If it's not, then obviously you're going to say that it's, in this case, prime over real or integer.